Hey, good to have you here. I'll show you how to create realistic muscles using the X muscle system, and I'll show you how to fix some of the issues I faced when I started using the plugin. All right, let's open up a fresh Blender file and get started. First, let's make sure we delete the default cube. And let's make sure that I have the uh, X muscle system enabled in my add-ons. We'll go to edit, preferences, the add-ons tab. All right, now this is a paid add-on. You can find it in the Blender market. Feel free to go and support the developer for future development. Let's add a cylinder and I'm creating a basic shape to play around with. So let's rotate it 90 degrees and extend it along the Y axis. Now I'm gonna loop cut it, give it a few more vertices. And I'm gonna use proportional editing to thin down the center. I'm gonna shorten up this side here too, and this side as well. Okay, and now we have something that uh, loosely resembles a beginner's first attempt at an arm. And let's continue. So let's add an armature. And I can't see it very well, so let's go to Object and Viewport Display and enable In Front. There we go, that's better. Now hop into edit mode, let's rotate it 90 degrees, and let's bring the bone over to the left. And I'm creating two bones here. This will create the elbow joint. Okay, now I'm going to parent the arm to the armature. And here you see it bends just fine. Uh, oh, what the heck? Okay, let's get rid of this. All right, it bends just fine. And now let's introduce the X muscle system. In the right panel, we have our X muscle system window. And what I'm going to do is go into pose mode. Now there's three ways to add a muscle. So you see at the targeting method, we have manual, at cursor, or auto aim. And the easiest way I found to add a muscle is with auto aim. So select auto aim, and in pose mode, we'll select the first bone, and then the second bone, where we want the muscle to come from. And then you'll click add stylized muscle. And there you see the muscle is added, but you can't see it very well. So same thing, go to viewport display and select in front. And here you'll see the entire muscle. Now, when we bend the arm, nothing happens. And the reason for this is we have what's called a controller. And think about it like a lever. What we'll do is we'll move this controller slightly onto the second bone. And what this does is it creates enough leverage for the muscle to use to create the movement. And now when we pose the bone, you see the muscle works. It flexes. And that's based off of the leverage that we gave it. So add more leverage, move it more, and you'll get more flex. And the closer to the joint you get, the less movement you get. And the real life anatomy can often be the best reference here, but it's not a rule of thumb. Now let's rename this muscle. We'll call it bicep. And we'll click this button here, which will rename it throughout the entire hierarchy. And this is important when you're organizing multiple muscles. Now let's hide this muscle. And you see when we flex the arm with it hidden, you see there's no deformation on the skin. And just like an armature, what we'll have to do is we'll have to apply this motion to the mesh using modifiers that the plugin gives us. And how we do this is we first select the muscle. So let's unhide this muscle. We'll select it. So select the muscle first and then the mesh. And we're looking under the musculature tab. And you see we have apply muscles to body. Once we select this, it creates the modifiers necessary for the movement. And let's hide the muscle again. And once we try it again, you'll see we have deformation. And this will be the core of creating realistic muscle movement in your mesh. But you see we still have an issue here because now that the muscle is deforming the mesh, we're getting a little bit of an issue right here. Now I'm just gonna change the bone shape to B bone just to make it a little bit easier to see. But the mesh looks all jagged near the joint. What again? Okay, that's it, I'm, I'm gonna turn off these things. Goodness, that's annoying. This is my first video and it's already crumbling. Stop, stop doing it. Stop doing this. This just had to happen on my first video. Okay. So let's fix this issue at the joint. So we're gonna select the mesh, go to weight paint. So the fix here is actually within the weight painting. The add-on uses vertex groups to show where the muscle should deform the mesh. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fix up this weight paint. What I'm going to do is go into fall off and select projected. What this will allow is me to draw all the way through the weight paint. And this is effective so we can make changes on both sides and not just what's in front of us. And this is useful 
useful for painting the entire mesh at the same time on both sides. So I'm just going to taper this a little bit and take the weight paint off the joint. And now if we go back to object mode and select our bones, and now when we move it in pose mode, you can see that it deforms a lot cleaner now. So this took me a long time to figure out. And I was really annoyed for hours until I figured out, oh, it's, it's just in the weight paint. So I hope I save you a little bit of time with that fix. So now I'm going to show you how to make a smoother appearance on the mesh with the X muscle system. And there's actually two ways to go about this. You can have a more cartoony looking muscle with the subdivision surface before the shrink wrap modifier on the mesh. So if you see, I'll add a subdivision surface. I'll put it before the shrink wrap modifier. And what this is doing is it allows the subdivision to happen before the shrink wrap. And this gives a, a nice clean line, as you can see with the muscle. And if we just go into the settings here, there's also some settings to increase the subsurf on the muscle itself. And this is the correct way to do it. You, you can also select the muscle and add a subsurf, but I like to use the setting that X muscle system gives. Now this is for a cartoony looking muscle with a nice clean line. If you have use for this, the other is a smoothed over more realistic approach. And this is with the subsurf after the shrink wrap. This is what you will typically want to do. And that'll really give that nice organic look. Now, something I also discovered is that if you're going for the subsurf modifier after the shrink wrap, on the mesh, you actually don't need the subsurf turned up on the X muscle system. It actually does look uh, pretty close to the same. So that should also help with the performance is just using the subsurf modifier after the shrink wrap and then that's, that's all you would really need. So that is my quick start guide to using X muscle system and getting up and going really quickly. Let me know if you'd like to see anything else using X muscle system. And when I find more useful features in X muscle system, I'll will create more tutorials for those as well. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know in the comments below whether this was helpful for you. And let me know if there's anything you'd like me to expand on. This add-on is very versatile and very big. And this is just scratching the surface of what this add-on is capable of. All right, guys, that will do it. Take care.